There's a very simple trick that drives narcissists completely mad and simultaneously makes healthier relationships so much easier. There's no reason to not use it. I'm going to share this with you. I think you're really going to enjoy it. The trick is simply to discuss openly flexibility. I'm not talking about yoga poses. I'm talking about mental flexibility. In any relationship, two people will, from time to time, be having different points of view. One person might want to go and see one movie versus another. You might be disagreeing regarding what type of food you want to eat at the restaurant. There are many situations in which there is some form of conflict and you have to solve the conflict. Conflict, mind you, is not unhealthy. Conflict simply means that you have opposing goals and you need to find some form of compromise. Conflict becomes unhealthy when people don't know how to resolve the conflict, when one person wants to impose their point of view on the other person without taking the other person into account. If this is the case, this can amount to resentment after time, and it also means one person is consistently giving away everything. From the other person's point of view, it might not be that important because they think, well, I just say what I want and I get what I want, so clearly the other person doesn't have an issue with it. But it could also be that the other person doesn't know how to put their foot down and doesn't know how to negotiate their position. With flexibility, it becomes much easier. So how to use flexibility? It's quite simple. You use a scale that goes from zero to 10. And on each of these topics, you ask the person, what is your flexibility between zero and 10 regarding this topic? So let's say you want to go to an Italian restaurant and I prefer to go to a Japanese restaurant. I can ask you, what is your flexibility between zero and 10? How much do you want to go to the Japanese one versus the, the Italian one? You might say, well, I've got some preference for the Italian one, but the Japanese one is sort of okay. My flexibility is say, uh, let's say at six out of 10, I'm somewhat flexible. I'd prefer the Italian one because I went recently to a Japanese one, but I'm okay. And maybe I'd say, well, my flexibility is lower in this, maybe a two out of 10, simply because I avoid gluten, therefore pasta is out of question, pizza is out of question. When it comes to other dishes, I really don't enjoy it that much. Unless I have a salad, I'm not in the mood for a salad and I haven't had sushi for a long time. So my flexibility is low, your flexibility is higher. In other words, it costs you less to change your mind on this specific topic. You, can, you don't have to use zero to 10, by the way. You can simply use low, medium, high. That can make it much easier. You want to pay attention to relationships where one person constantly has high flexibility and the other person constantly has low flexibility or no flexibility. If someone has no flexibility on anything, it basically means they want their way or it's the highway. They don't care about you getting outcomes that you're interested in. That is not sustainable. And it's something you can point out. Every time we talk about this, you've got virtually no flexibility, you know, which sort of tells me that if I don't go along with you, you don't really mind it and you're okay losing me. They might say yes. In that case, get the hell out of there as quickly as you can, because if someone doesn't value you, there's no reason for you to be in a relationship with them. Now, usually there's some level of compromise and the compromise ought to be following the flexibility, not so much. I did this, Therefore, you should do that because I did these things, so you owe it to me. It's just a matter of flexibility. Some people don't really care that much. If you go to the movies, maybe you don't really care what you're going to see, provided that it's not too terrible a movie, and maybe someone else really wants to see something. So let's take an example. A couple was having a fight because he'd promised to go to dinner with her and then realized there was an important football match that day. He still had flexibility to have not watch the match and go to the dinner. And she had virtually no flexibility. She was a damned. You made the promise. You have to show up. I'm not going to let you cancel for a football match. When I asked her about it, it turned out this was a very important match. His team had reached the final of a championship, which hadn't happened in ages. So it was very important. And I was amazed that he even had any flexibility. He could have said, this is a really important match. This is what's happening. But instead, he asked, would it be okay? I'd prefer to watch the match. And then we'll go, of course, to dinner any other of the 364 days of the year where my team is not playing the final. But for her, there was no question about it. He was going to show up at the dinner or the relationship was finished. I've mentioned this person in another video. You might recognize the subtle psychology and the flexibility.
in this case I reframed it for this person, I pointed out that this man had flexibility and she had none, like zero out of 10. She defended that she had zero out of 10 because she didn't want to have any flexibility. And she thought that football was stupid. So I asked, well, would there be any other reason? She said, no, none. I want things my way and I've got zero flexibility. Here's a tip. If you're in a relationship with someone who has got zero flexibility and doesn't want flexibility and expects you to have all the flexibility, this is unlikely to be a satisfying relationship for you. So maybe observe reality and understand if you continue in this relationship, you're unlikely to be getting your way as much as you like. So as long as you're willing to give up pretty much everything in the future, why not continue? But if you're hoping that at one point the person will show flexibility and they never show any, or it's always little, or they make you pay for the flexibility, well, don't be surprised when in the future you don't get the flexibility, or they make you pay for the flexibility, or they're resentful, or something goes wrong, or they throw a hissy fit, or they manipulate you somehow. If this is the way they operate, this is simply how they are. They're showing you the true face, regardless of the words. If you see in the actions that it adds up, fine. If it doesn't add up, well, then you can choose to listen to the words or you can choose to observe how they behave. The behavior tells you everything you need to know. The words are simply to announce the intention and to let you know what behavior to expect. But if it doesn't follow, then don't expect it to follow. Of course, it's highly likely there'll be a pushback and they won't want to tell you how much flexibility they have or they're going to try to dodge it. In which case, you can simply say something like, I am confused. I don't understand how important this is for you, and I don't understand if there's any point even negotiating. If this is terribly important, and you've got no flexibility, fine, then I will stop making my case. I'll accept it because maybe I've got more flexibility than you do. But so far, it seems that you systematically have got no flexibility, and that would be completely unreasonable. Therefore, I'm sure it's not the case, and therefore, I would like to understand you better. You will see if they are willing to accept to give some flexibility or not. Always beware if they give the flexibility, if that is followed by some attempt to punish you, to blackmail you, to sulk, to deprive you of something. If this is the case, be aware that this is part of the dynamics of the relationship, that there will always be a punishment that is waiting if they don't get their way. This is the way that little brats operate. They will blackmail adults into getting their way. You might enjoy this, but in all likelihood, if someone told you you would be starting a relationship with a brat, you probably would not want it. If somebody told you you will be starting a relationship with someone who will blackmail you to systematically get their way and make sure that you never get their way, you probably wouldn't start the relationship. And something for you to consider, maybe it's not so much about the movie, about the restaurant, about the holiday destination. Maybe it's more that they enjoy, seeing how you feel when they make sure that you don't get what you want.